Well, here it is coming back. Now the supply chain has to get online. The supply chain is going to be greatly disrupted because of this longshoreman strike. 36 ports at a standstill. It represents 40%, roughly, of the goods that we ship and receive from this country. Importing, exporting at a standstill. It's not happened since 1977 that all these ports were on strike at the same time. Now, joining me, Jim Nels, a supply chain consultant based in Chicago. He serves as a chief procurement officer, chief supply chain officer, chief operations officer for many, many companies. He understands how this works or how this doesn't work. Jim, nice to have you back on the program. Steve, good morning. How are you doing today? I I'm good. Day two. Day two here, Jim. Um, is this every day that rolls on? Bigger disruptions. I'm told that after a week, we're going to start seeing things not on the shelves at, at the grocery store. I saw big lines like Costco. People know this is a problem. People realize it's a problem. Every day that this drags on, it creates bigger disruptions, doesn't it? It does. And people are reacting like they did during COVID, right? They learned from COVID that said, um, when you think that something's going to go wrong, go to the grocery store first thing. Um, if you look at it, this is costing the U.S. economy $5 billion per day, according to J.P. Morgan. And the thing is, for every day the strike goes on, it's going to take a week to catch up. Meaning, if this strike goes on for seven days, we're not looking at catching up until two months later, which is really incredible. You know, that's what I was told. Uh, you think about this. If this strike goes for a week, we'll be feeling it at Christmas. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. So uh, the president or alleged president, Joe Biden, has the ability to trigger the Taft-Hartley Act, but he can't. They've already lost the union vote, uh, half of it anyhow. If he goes against this union and kicks back and says, hey, you have to go into a holding pattern for 90 days, he'll lose whatever union vote he has left, and that could be the whole election. Might be anyway. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to irritate America in general, which you lose the election on. This is, not, this is a terrible time for a strike for this administration, isn't it? It's absolutely terrible for the administration. They, and, and invoking the Taft-Hartley Act for the first time would be crazy for these guys, especially since the president of the um, Longshoremen's Association, Harold Diggett, said that if they invoke it, they'll go back to work, but they will do such a slowdown that it will actually be worse than the strike because people will expect things to come. Um, Christmas is already ruined for those companies that didn't plan for the strike. Uh, the stuff that's supposed to happen for Christmas should have been on the shelves or at least in the warehouses at the beginning of September. We're now in October. If it's not there yet, it's not going to come. So I think that the um, longshoremen are actually the Grinch who stole Christmas. So what do you think about this? Uh, and maybe they are, but they also have a, a well, I'll call it a game, Jim. The longshoremen have a game to play. This is the best possible time for them to go on strike. And, and they want to increase wages. I got that. But they were offered a 50% wage increase. They said no. Because they want to keep automation out of these ports, which is weird because you look at ports around the world. America has the least automated ports already, just about of any uh, civilized country. But they want to keep that all out, keep people working. Well, that's not going to work when all the, when everything's automated in China and Taiwan and all over the world, right? Steve, there was a point in time where being a buggy whip manufacturer was a great job, right? But then, you know, productivity took over. We had these things called cars. Um, if you look at um, some of the videos that the president of the ILA has put out, he's against things like ATMs. He's against things like easy passes. He doesn't like any automation. Automation is the key to saving the dock workers jobs, not to getting them eliminated. To your point, the United States ports rank below places in the third world like the Congo when it comes to port efficiency. Think about that. The port of Los Angeles is below the ports in Congo and how they unload ships because we're afraid to do what we need to do in order to um, become a 20th century country. To modernize. Not yeah, we're we're not modernizing our ports, so already we're, we're paying too much and going too slowly. Um, but this is, this is the best time for these guys to strike. They can say, we don't want any automation. They can say that. I don't see how you get there. But, they, but the point is, they've got their thumb in the soft spot. Somebody's going to scream uncle, and it's going to be America. But by the time that happens, there's going to be a financial price because this will create scarcity on the shelves, as I said. It will create higher prices, which America is sick and tired of. And it'll create a political price. This could be determinative. This strike could determine who is president of the United States January of next year. 
This may be Donald Trump's October surprise when it comes to Kamala Harris, because the Biden administration has decided they're not going to get involved with this, even though last year they got involved with the railroad potential strike and they got involved with the West Coast stock workers potential strike. For some reason now, because it's a political well, season. Jim, let's, let's, let's throw this out there. Let's game this out a little bit. Maybe Joe Biden doesn't want to help. Maybe Joe Biden's irritated about the way he was treated. Maybe Joe Biden's like, eh, you're on your own. Good luck. I'm the president. I could help out, but I'm not going to. What do you think about Who that knows? idea? I, I, I don't know if he's that cognizant to do that, but uh, that'd be a really good Fair thing point. for him to do. Fair point. But, I mean, you can see that he's, you know, or, well, maybe Jill's calling the shot. Nobody likes inside the, the Biden circle. They don't like the way he was kicked to the curb by Nancy Pelosi and everybody else. And he's like, all right. You didn't like that? Well, I didn't like it at all, so here's what you get in return. I mean, whatever it is, whether it's the longshoremen, political calculations being made on both sides, whatever it is, those that are going to pay the price are you and me. If you like bananas, sorry about your luck. If, you, if you're really dependent on coffee, sorry about your luck. A lot of these imported things are not going to be on the shelf, right? No, they're not going to be. And the other part of this that no one's really talking about are the over 100,000 union workers who are going to lose their jobs if the strike goes on for more than one week. We're talking about people who build your homes, the people that build your cars, the people that stock the grocery store shelves. They're all union people. And this guy, the, the president of the union, Harold Diggett, doesn't care about them. He only cares about himself and his legacy. And that's why he's doing this. They you don't have seem to like him much. No, I don't. I don't. Because he's, he's, he's not very smart for his people. If he was a smart person, he would say, listen, listen, I understand that we have to have automation in the ports. I want to guarantee from you, the shippers, that for every person displaced, you'll find them a job that pays them the same and gives them the same benefits that they had when they were working at the port. He's not thinking strategically. He's thinking about tomorrow. He's not thinking about next week. But how would they, how would they do that, Jim? How would you promise somebody if they're making you know, $40 an hour at the port, and I'm sure they get well paid there, uh, fifty dollars an hour, whatever it is, depending on what your level of skill is and what your machinery you're running. Where would you get them a job? I mean, you, I mean, can, get them a, you can get them a job at the distribution centers where all these goods get offloaded from a ship. You can get them a point. job driving the truck that takes the truck from the port to the distribution center. All right. You can get them jobs anywhere. The the point is, these shipping companies would willing would literally be willing to pay these people to not work as long as they could automate the ports to be more efficient. Because That's now, fair, Jim. I, That's fair. Uh, here's the last question real quick. When would you start to expect to start to see things not on the shelf? we we got about 30 seconds here. When do you expect things to, like whether it's bananas, I've heard a lot about that, and coffee and everything, when do you expect that to disappear? How soon? You're going to start seeing some fruits and vegetables not on the shelf in the next two weeks if, if this goes beyond that because they're going to get spoilage in the ports or on the ships that are waiting to offload. After that, you're going to start seeing cars. After that, you're going to start seeing raw materials like uh, plywood for building homes. But it's literally two weeks before you start seeing the impact on the shelves. All right, so it's a while yet. But that doesn't mean it won't last, because if the strike goes for a week or 10 days, we're in real trouble. Jim Nels, uh, really appreciate the, the clear-eyed vision of what's coming. And it's not good, not for the American people and not for the politicians on the left side of the aisle. Thank you, Jim. Talk soon.